Hey y'all, it's Jess. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. Today I'm in my kitchen making some peach preserves and since I was going to be canning, I decided to go ahead and answer a question that recently popped up in my comment section. The question was in response to me giving a quick flash of some preserves I've made and someone showed interest in the jars that I use. So today I wanna to tell you about wet canning jars, about why I chose to use these and why I am planning on moving to using these as much as I possibly can. Before I jump into this topic, sharing with you what I know about these jars, I want to clarify the fact that I am not sponsored by WIC, I am not endorsed by them, I have not received any product from them. Everything that I'm gonna show you today, I bought, and the reason why I'm making this video is because I, myself, was having a hard time finding a whole lot of clear information um, whenever I began researching these jars for the purpose of canning, and so I wanted to remedy that lack of information by adding some to it. Now the canning jars that we typically use here in the United States have a consumable lid, which means you do not reuse these, um, that's metal on top, it's coated on bottom, and it has a compound around the edge. Now we use mason jars for lots of stuff in our house. We drink out of them, we milk our goats into them, we uh, store our leftovers in them, store our goat's milk in them, store our dry goods in them, and of course can a lot. And I have for a long time. However, I was really bothered by the necessity of replacing that little metal lid every single time. So in researching alternatives, I found just a couple. I found uh, these things called Tatler lids, which are a reusable lid and seal for canning in your mason jars. And it's a plastic lid with a rubber gasket that you can reuse. And I haven't used those personally because at the same time, I also found out about wet jars. And the thing that I really liked about these was that your lid is glass. And so plastic is no part of the equation, which I preferred that because, I mean, they just figured out the dangers of BPA within the last Last 10 years up until that that was what lined the bottom of canning jar lids now the plastic that lines the bottom of those lids doesn't have BPA in it but it does have other things in it and you know you can't go wrong with glass I liked the idea of using an all glass jar in my research I found that they were a thicker glass I also liked that and I found some conflicting things about whether or not you could reuse the little rubber gasket on these jars. So today I'm going to share with you what I found. I'm not going to advise you what to do because this is going to have to be a personal decision that an individual makes and is willing to take responsibility for. Because wet jars for canning are not USDA approved. However, they are what is still most commonly used in places like the UK, in Germany, where these are made. And from what I understand in reading on different forums, uh, please chime in if you live in any of these places because I would love to hear it from an individual rather than just reading it secondhand. But from what I understand, um, you know, ball canning jars are a lot harder to get in other countries, whereas wet jars are kind of like the standard for canning. You really have to use a lot of caution whenever you're going to make the decision to do something different. Um, I did do extensive research and at the end of that research, I decided that this was going to be a way that I was okay with canning. I feel like it is safe. I made the decision after all of my research for myself that I was completely comfortable with canning in jars like this and with reusing the rubber gaskets. I read some conflicting information, some literature, especially the websites that are geared towards the United States said that these had to be replaced every time. However, I found through forums, I found some blogs where people had been using their rubber gaskets for many years and that they only replaced them when they became war or uh, began to dry rot or if they were imperfect if they got torn in any way that that would be when they would be replaced and that makes sense to me um, considering that rubber in so many areas is something that can be reused it can be sanitized 
and it doesn't lose its ability to do its job as a seal. So this is just a decision that I've made. Now up until this point, I have only canned things in my wet jars like jam, um, like high acid type stuff that can be canned in a water bath canner. I haven't done anything in the pressure canner. Or I have found instances of people who have done plenty of that. That's one of those things that I don't really feel comfortable like advising saying, hey, you can totally do this. You know, in theory, I know you can, but I have not personally done it, so I can't vouch for that by my own experience. So wet jars have a few few different parts which I'll show you. First we have the glass jar. These are in metric so they are in liters instead of pints and quarts. However anywhere that sells them also lists how many ounces they are. This is a 19.6 ounce jar. So what I do whenever I'm doing a recipe I just add up if it's if the recipe is for like six quarts I just add up how many ounces that is and then just plan my jars accordingly based on the ounces. They come in all different shapes. There's this one which is their mold jar line. There's this one which is like their cylinder jar line and they have a really beautiful line uh, called tulip jars which are real rounded around the bottoms and kind of flared at the top. I don't have any of those yet. So they're a really thick glass. Let's say that there are, are quite a bit thicker than the mason jars that I typically use which I only use ball or curb mason jars because I found the other ones tend to break a little easier. But these are a really thick nice tempered glass and they all have pretty wide mouths. They each come with a rubber gasket that fits around the top of each jar, just sets on the top of each jar. And they each have a glass lid that has the wet strawberry there. And each jar comes with two little metal clips which hold this lid in place for processing or for storage, which the clips go on just like this and you place them adjacent to each other across the jar. Canning with the wet jars pretty much looks the same as canning with traditional American canning jars. I've got some more jars in there. Those are just sterilized in here. I'm sterilizing a couple more. Um, bringing my preserves back up to a boil. These are spiced peach preserves. and I'm getting ready to fill these jars. Okay, so I've got my little gaskets uh, boiling. I'm gonna simmer those for a few minutes just to get them good and sterilized. And then I'm gonna sterilize the lids as well. All right, I've got my jars filled. I'm about to put the rings on, which is the hardest part of using these jars. It takes just a little bit of practice, but it's really not that difficult. And then I'm gonna put my clips on and just water bath these like I would in regular jars. Here are the jars ready to go in. Um, Oh wait, that one's not, I don't have clips on. I'm try to just show you here, uh, putting these clips on. I've got the seal on there, and this is on top. Of course, the rim was wiped off. Everything is sterilized and clean. This is hot. I'm just clipping these on opposite of each other, making sure they're flush on the top and the sides, so it's ready to go in. Okay, they're just covered in an inch of water. We'll process these for the same amount of time as I would do if they were in regular cans. This is the fig jam that I made the other day. When you take your jars out of the canner, you're not going to hear the pop of a metal lid like you would if you're used to canning with American canning jars. So you leave those clips on until the jars are completely cool. Um, I usually just leave them on until the next day. And then you take them off and the way you test a wet jar to see if it's done is you, you pick it up by the lid. If the lid is sealed enough to this container to hold the weight of the jar, that's whenever you know that you have a good seal. Of course the lid is clear so you can see inside you would be able to see if you were having any sort of molding or discoloring. Once your contents are canned, you just store them like you would any other canned goods, like in your pantry. And when you're ready to use them, you just pull this tab here uh, very gently, kind of working it out from underneath that seal until it releases the air and the lid pops off. Now let's talk really briefly about the price of these. They are more expensive. They're available on Amazon, like several of the different things. I'll put some links down below. I got these from the container store. They had them there and I was able to use like a 20% off coupon, making them roughly like $3 a jar and they have free shipping if you spend so much. So that was one way, but the thing is they're really limited on their shapes, like the tulip ones and some of the really pretty shaped jars they do not carry. So 
I, I wanted to give them a good solid try and can in them some before I made much of an investment on buying many. You can also order directly from like what, I think it's wetjars.com. I'll put that down. I have not ordered from them yet. Um, however, it is their official website. So I can't see that there would be any issues of all the reviews I've read. They have very good customer service. So I can't speak to that directly. If I ever do end up ordering from them, I'll make sure to update you guys and let you know. Basically what you're looking at for these, just depending on the size, you're looking at anywhere between like three to six dollars a jar and you can buy replacement gaskets, you can buy replacement clips, you can buy replacement lids. All of the parts can be uh, replaced very affordably. All of those parts are available on wetjars.com. So they are more expensive, but for me, which I know I always tell you guys I'm not a prepper. However, I do have some mindsets that I want to have the option <laughs> to like be prepared if I, if I so needed to. And so for me, I feel like I would like to have you know, a, a sizable collection. I don't need, I'll continue to use mason jars. They're significantly cheaper, um, especially for like giving as gifts. I give a lot of canned goods away as gifts for Christmas presents, and I'm not likely going to give away such expensive jars. So I will continue to use all of the mason jars that I have. I might give the Tatler li lids a try, but I would like to have, you know, a pretty good collection of the wet jars, just because it would be nice to have the option of canning without having to buy any consumable parts. So to sum up the pros of using the wet jars, they're beautiful, the glass is really strong, and the biggest reason why I am interested in them is you can make the choice to reuse that rubber gasket, therefore eliminating the need of a consumable product every single time that you can. Now, the cons, they do cost more. They're in the metric system, which could be confusing and just take a little bit of extra brain power. The other issue is because of their different sizes, you might not be able to can as neatly in your, uh, you know, your water bath canner, your pressure canner. I know that like my, my All American pressure canner holds seven quarts perfectly. However, it wouldn't hold the wet jars perfectly. So you might, you might have to do more rounds of canning with the same amount of food just because of the shape of the jars. The other downside is that those little pieces can kind of be hard to keep up with. I've got like a designated spot in one of my drawers for those little clips because basically once something can is can, you don't need those clips anymore. So you've just got to keep up with them in the meantime. Overall, I really like them. I will not use them exclusively simply because I have so many mason jars and because it would cost a lot of money to go ahead and jump to a huge collection of wet jars. However, I would like to add to my collection because I think that it just makes sound sense to have the option to continue canning without having to stockpile a ton of uh, canning lids. With the wet jars, I could just have some extra gaskets to account for aging or damaging, but I wouldn't have to have a new one every single time. So that's my take on things. These are all just my opinions, of which I just wanted to share to add a little bit of information for those of you who might come across these and not know what they are. I have been seeing jars like this in like cookbooks and especially on blogs from people who are not American and I've always thought those are so beautiful, but it just never occurred to me that they were canning jars. I just didn't know. So when I when I started researching, I found conflicting information. Clearly, I don't have like years of experience in using these to be able to offer you, but I did do pretty extensive research enough to make my own decision, and I just wanted to be able to share that with you. I enjoy just exhausting what information is out and available to me when I'm trying to make a decision, and this was one of those things that isn't super commonly used. They are apparently a lot more popular now than they were even five years ago. But when you start searching for them, you find a lot of really cute stuff, but not a whole lot of super substantial information. So if you are in a country where wet jars are the norm, please put your input down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Or if this is something that you yourself have been using for a while, I'd love to hear from you too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope this helps. I wish I had more information to offer and I believe I will. I'm gonna continue using these and add to my collection as I can, but I will be sure to share that journey with you guys as I go. Thank you so much for watching. I bless you. Until next time.